Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are jumping into the next spring series, and this is a hot one. Wow, we had so many signups for this, and we know this is a hot topic because like you, we're on the ground listing and selling real estate every single day. We're in the trenches writing offers every single day, and we know exactly what you're dealing with. One of the claims I made when I shared that we were going to have this topic as our second session of this five-week series, hopefully you plan on joining us for the, for the remaining series. You know where to find them, gloveru.com forward slash webinar. I made the claim that so far this year, January, February, and now March, which March is basically over as of today, we have over 100 buyer offers accepted year to date. So you're probably wondering, how are you getting all those offers accepted right now? I can't get a buyer deal to save my life. Every single buyer I write, it's like going back to the drawing board, going back to the drawing board. And by, by the way, I will also be upfront and tell you, we didn't write 100 offers to get 100 sales, <laughs> okay? We probably had to write 300 offers to get those 100 sales, but we're gonna cover today with our buyer expert, Jolyn Mercica, exactly what we are doing differently to get a high percentage of those offers accepted. So I know many of you are on for the first time. In fact, when I looked at uh, the, the registration list, we can see how many emails are first timers. I think we have over 100 first timers on. So welcome. First time on a Glover U session. My name is Jeff Glover. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. If you're not familiar with me, I've been on the ground listing and selling real estate for over 18 years now. And I am still on the ground listing and selling between 80 and 100 homes a year. Personally, our team here in Michigan does between 900 and a thousand. So when we share information, when we put on webinars, when we put on events, we're sharing with you just what we're doing. We're not sharing with you stuff that we read in a book 10 years ago or something that we heard in a mastermind. We are just sharing with you what we've applied through trial and error, what's working and also what's not working. We are first to admit when something we apply does not go well. And we'll share that at any one of our events at any one of our webinars at any time. Now we're gonna to get to the main event in just a moment, but wherever you're taking notes, I would encourage you to turn to a clean sheet of paper, open, and open up a new Word document, because I wanna start off with sharing with you some free resources that you can have access to before we jump into today's main event with JoLynn Mercica. So turn to a clean sheet of paper, open a Word doc. I wanna share with you some great resources. First things first, I want you to write down is the word scripts, write down the word scripts, S-C-R-I-P-T-S, scripts, plural, sounds like a cheer, S-P-R, yeah, I'm kidding, S-C-R-P, scripts, S-C-R-I-P-T-S, scripts, plural, all right, next to that, I want you to write five, five, four, 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 and I'm going to make it easier on you, just as if you were texting a friend, because you, if you're able to open up your cell phone, and just like you're texting a new friend, just open up your text messaging, all right, and plug in there the number. Now, some of you might be saying, Jeff, I have your scripts. Why do I need them again? Well, we update them every 12 to 18 months. I hope you're not still using scripts that were produced five to 10 years ago by somebody that's not in production anymore. So it's recipient 55444. I know it's only five digits. Somehow it works. I don't know how, but it does. And you, you put the number in and then you just put in the word scripts just like that all right you hit send you send that off and we will send you a copy of our entire script book much of the scripts we're going to use today are in that book so you're going to want to get your hands on that while you have your cell phone in your hand all right i want you to open up your facebook app because we have you know just around a hundred of you that are brand new to glove you that have never seen us or heard of us before maybe Open up your Facebook app since you got your phone in your hand anyways. And at the top of your Facebook app, there's a little magnifying glass. Go ahead and click on that magnifying glass and just type into there, Glover U Inner Circle. All right, Glover U Inner Circle should look like that. It's a Facebook group. It's free to join the group. Now, whenever, it, it, once you get in there, it'll look like that. Whenever we are sharing new scripts, new ideas, new strategies, um, uh, new technology, new CRM ideas, new, new drip campaigns. We always put them in the inner circle first. It's free to join. It's going to ask you a few questions when you go to join the inner circle. I would encourage you to answer them because one of the things that we produce quarterly is a publication called the Glover Gazette. Again, 
close to 100 of you are on for the first time. This is a 45 to 50 page publication. Many of you already received this. Hopefully you've gotten yours in the mail by now. They were sent out a month ago. Uh, if you haven't gotten it yet, maybe with as slow as the post office is, you'll get it by next Christmas. No, hopefully you get it sooner than that. Anyways, if you want a copy of this free, we mail these out. 35,000 copies of these go out to agents across North America. Lover, you inner circle. It's going to ask you if you want to subscribe to this, put your information in there. Don't put your email address in because it's printed. We're going to mail this to you. All right. So make sure you have that. So that way you get on our mailing list for the Glover Gazette. Okay. Last but not least, I want to share with you and we felt it was safe to share. It's now been exactly 21 days from our last event, which was the Live Unreal Summit down in Orlando, Florida. Our next one is coming up this July in Traverse City, Michigan. It's gorgeous up there. Go to liveunrealretreat.com. Just write down liveunrealretreat.com. I'm not going to give you any sort of pitch on it. Just check it out. Save the date, July 19th through the 21st. All right. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can come in and spend the weekend. It's a great vacation spot in the middle of summer. It's gorgeous in Northern Michigan. That's liveunrealretreat.com. We plan on having 500 agents from around the U.S. and Canada there all safely socially distanced, table spread out six feet apart. We just put on a killer event and in 21 days, I'm sorry, it's been 21 days since that event. We had 250 in attendance and we had not two, not three, not four, but zero reports of COVID cases at our last event down in Orlando, Florida. So we're excited to continue that in July at the Live Unreal Retreat. That's liveunrealretreat.com. All right. Let's go ahead and get to the main event, which is how we're going to get more of these buyer offers accepted. I know that this is a hot topic right now. I know this is something that we're struggling with um, as a team. And, and the reality is we still have 100 buyer sales year to date. So we're doing something right. All right. And the queen of doing something right is Miss JoLynn Mercica. Now, why should you listen to JoLynn? Well, first things first. Uh, because she's sharp, she's on the ground, she knows her stuff, but also because she's been working side by side with me for over 10 years now. So she knows how we operate as a team. And here's what I love about JoLynn. She does 45 to 50 buyer sides a year and maybe only works, don't get mad JoLynn, maybe works 30, 35, 40 hours a week. That's a whole nother discussion on how she's able to have all this balance and how, how are you able to sell 40, 50 buyer transactions a year and only work 35 to 40 hours a week. It's called balance. It's called leverage. We'll talk about it at a later date, but I want you to hear firsthand from JoLynn, the one that is on the ground writing these offers along with you, exactly what we're doing. Now, before she begins, some of these things you're going to hear and say, oh, okay, I already do that. All right. I already do that. Yep. I do that. Hey, listen, we might share 10 or 15 things and you might do eight or nine of them. All you need is that one. Sometimes all it takes is that one idea that gets your offer accepted. I will tell you in the last three months, when we look at buyer offers that I've personally had accepted, and I know JoLynn would second this, it's because of something we did right now that we weren't doing three months ago, that we weren't doing six months ago. So for, so, for those of you that might have joined us back in the fall, you may remember in October, we did a similar session. We have updated our content. We have updated what we're doing. And more importantly than just the, hey, give me the list of things you guys are doing to get offers accepted. It's also the conversations that take place during the buyer consultation and the expectations that are set during the offer consultation. And JoLynn is a master at that. So JoLynn Mercica, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And uh yeah, just for all of you uh, to know the 30 to 40 hours a week, it took about eight years to really get in that position to be able to do that. So uh, in the beginning, it was incredibly, you know, strenuous. I started back just like Jeff was saying um, with him on the team when he started it in 2009. Obviously, we know that the market was in a completely different place. So what we have spent really the past six to eight months doing is bringing about um, my newer buyer mastery program where we rewrote virtually everything to be relevant to today's market. So as we're talking about this buying power checklist today and discussing how we are able to get more offers accepted, um, keep an open mind. Like Jeff said, you may be doing some of these things already uh, for the things that you're not doing. They may seem incredibly extreme. Okay. But that's where 
where we're at. We're writing offers, 40, 50, $60,000 over list price. I mean, goodness, what more can we do? So we really had to dive deep. And a lot of these things came from talking with our clients, talking with the people that were in my buyer mastery class, asking, what are you doing? Where yeah. do you have your successes, et cetera. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, we're going to discuss developing your own buying power checklist for you to use with your clients, which will in turn lead to getting more offers accepted this year. So first and foremost, the purpose of this buying power checklist is to help your clients to understand the ways in which they can make their offer stronger. Okay. So when we pull out this buying power checklist, this is a discovery phase. This is an opportunity for our buyers to understand what their buying power actually is. And buying power can be defined as the strength a buyer has with their current assets and purchasing ability, okay? Buying power defined as the strength a buyer has with current assets and their purchasing ability. So this checklist is gonna show multiple strategies to make the offer stronger. And like I said, some are going to be realistic and others are going to be out of reach for some buyers. So the fact of the matter is, guys, there is no one size fits all strategy with this list. And be sure to explain this list as potential options for your client. Okay. When you start going over these things, some of them are going to look like you're absolutely crazy and that's okay. We never want buyers to feel bad about not having the strongest buying power. So you really have to be thorough, be gentle in this explanation. Let them know that these are just a list of things that we have compiled from multiple agents that are having success in this market. The more that we're able to do, fantastic. The less that we're able to do, that's still fine. And something that you really may find here, guys, is that by having this conversation up front, this is something that should be introduced during your buyer consultation, okay? So this is not something that we want introduced to them once we've walked them through a home, they are head over heels in love, they have a deadline in three hours to get an offer in, and then they realize they have virtually no chance at securing this home. This is the fastest and best way to lose your client, okay? If we are not setting them up for success, we are the experts. We are the ones that know this. No one else can set them up for the success. So this is on you. Okay. Well, and I think I speak for everyone when, when you hear, when, when you say that I'm thinking, okay, I understand why the buying power checklist is important to do at the buyer consultation, because I've been in the situation as probably a hundred percent of our attendees today where we go to give them advice to get their offer accepted at the time of offer because things just move so fast and all of a sudden they want to think about it. They want to talk to family. They want to talk to friends. They want to consult with their, with their mortgage person. They want to consult with their financial advisor. And the reality is we don't have that kind of time, number one. And number two, when they consult with all those people, you know they're coming back with things that are not going to get their offer accepted. And so it's almost like inevitable, you know, as agents, we think, well, all right, well, I guess I got to write this first one for them to show them, you know, how things are, where we could skip that entire process, we could skip that entire step and have a greater chance of getting our first offer accepted the first time around by going over their buying power during the buyer consultation and not the offer consultation. So it's super important that it's done right away. Absolutely. And thank you for bringing that up, Jeff, because what else needs to be done right away in your buyer consultation is a thorough examination of what is happening in the market right now. You need to have the most honest and really kind of it's a brutal conversation right now if we're being totally honest with them having to hear that you're going to have to bring excess cash out of your bank account even though your home's not worth that that's not a great reality to a lot of buyers but at the end of the day this is what we're doing in order to be successful and getting our offers accepted so the more honest and upfront you are with them from the very very beginning of this that is going to lead you to your best success with getting these offers accepted a bit quicker. Hopefully that's the goal, right? Yep, so yep. before we dive into this checklist, I do want to go over everybody's you know, texting scripts over there, but I want 
to give you our closing line that we've put on all of our scripts right now, because yeah. this is very, very important. And this is something to close for your buyer consultation, which you need to be doing every single time right now. Write and this down. Is, yes, that is, if sitting down and meeting with me could potentially shave weeks off of your property search and help you get offers accepted quicker, would it be worth 20 to 30 minutes of your time to find out how? So the reason this dialogue is so important, every buyer is coming to us telling us they know what's going on in the market. They've heard their, their friends are telling them, their family is telling them, they know a lender, they know this, they know that. When you start asking the questions and digging deeper, what do we find out? We find out that they really don't know. They know it's hot. They know that it's competitive, but they have no clue what it's actually going to take to get the job done. So by using verbiage such as potentially shaving weeks off of the time, what do they say now? Well, wait, why is it going to take weeks? Yeah. I thought we could go out and find a house and be moving in in weeks. Mm -hmm. So this is why we say if sitting down and meeting with me could potentially shave weeks off of your property search and help you get offers accepted quicker, would it be worth 20 to 30 minutes of your time to find out how? So the opposite side of that coin is the second question they're gonna ask is, what do you mean get offers accepted quicker? What, what does that mean? Don't we submit an offer and then we get it accepted? This tells you that they really have no idea what's going on right now, guys. So listen, say the right words, listen to how they respond and run with it because this is your chance. This is your time to shine. This is your time to prove that you are the expert in this market, okay? Yeah. Buyers kind of are just as good as salespeople as we are. So we need to turn it back around on them and let them realize they don't know what's happening in this market. They don't know what it's going to take to get it done. So you, Can you repeat that one more time, Jolyn. I knew they just, I know they just threw it in the chat, yep. but say it to me as if I'm a buyer, right? Like just nice yep. and smooth. So Jeff, if sitting down with me could potentially shave weeks off of your property search mm -hmm. and help you get offers accepted quicker. Would it be worth 20 to 30 minutes of your time to find out how? I think it would. Yep, absolutely. And what I love about that is no matter what they come back with, you know, well, what do you mean weeks or what do you mean offers accepted? That's exactly why we need to get together, right? Yep. And this is the time to note as well. If someone will absolutely not sit down with you, if they're not interested in learning how to be successful in this market, Think about if this is a lead worth working, guys. Yeah. What is running rampant right now? Buyers, not mm -hmm. listings. We have buyers coming out of every corner that they could be. And we don't want to let them run around and continue to waste our time if they're not ready to be a buyer in this market. So yeah. use it, use it, use it. Okay, so let's go into building our own buying power checklist. So this is something, you know, what we have to remember here, guys, is that what we're writing, what has worked for us, you know, it's unique to our market. So there are going to be some things that we're doing that you don't need to do. I mean, down in Orlando, I sat in my breakout and I had this lovely group of, of agents from, I believe it was Louisiana. And I said, appraisal guarantee. And they were like, what? What is that? And I said, what? Tell me where you live. I want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> They're not writing over list price. They're not doing these things. So Keep in mind that this is really targeted towards our uber competitive markets right now that we're really seeing nationwide, but it may not specifically be within your market. Yep. So we've spent the time compiling what's been most effective over here at JGA to propose to our buyers. So we've got some, some normal ones that we're doing, and then I've got a few out of the box ones that we've really added on recently as things have gotten even more and more and more competitive. So, Which, you know, that, and I'm glad you said that, because I know there was, there's people on that were 
at the session we did in October. And in October, we, we talked about building your own buying power checklist. So we have some great students that have gone through all of our programs or have come to our events or in your breakout, but they still want more. And the reason is because a lot has changed. And this is why we added it to this list, even though we just covered this in October, because a lot has changed since October. And we've even updated our own buying power checklist. So I'm glad you said that, Jolene. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's kind of start with our basics. And remember, this is stuff that you guys are probably already doing, but that's not the mindset to have. The mindset to have with this is I need to know how to readily explain this to my buyers so that they feel comfortable and understand the need for doing these things. So number one, offering over list price. If you're not doing this already, wow, I'm very envious because we are, you know, really going above and beyond right now in our market. Now, this is something that some buyers are probably going to look at you and say, well, why do I need to offer over list price? And this is where my best piece of advice that I've been giving to all of my clients in my buyer mastery class is go and pull the numbers, not necessarily just the comps, pull the numbers of the sold properties just around that. They don't have to be a perfect comparison, okay? What we wanna show here is that our list price has been here and our sales price has been here. If we can see that over 50, 60, 70% of these homes are seeing that kind of activity on them, how do we argue with the facts? This is going to help them understand why they need to do that. So you're actually, during the buyer consultation, you're actually showing comps that just like on a listing presentation of active sales price, meaning list price, days on market and sold price. So yep. it's backing up your claim. I mean, that that's brilliant because buyers hear that or they might, you know, well, of course you want a deal. So of course you're going to tell me I have to pay over asking. And some buyers, I hate to say it, are still a little kind of naive and thinking, well, you only want me to pay over asking so you can get paid more. Like, Correct. no, we're giving you this advice to get your offer accepted. And oh, by the way, in your the exact zip code you're looking in in the last 30 days take a look and obviously you're showing them live examples i love that one if you did not write that down you're missing an opportunity there during your buyer consult absolutely because it is more than just the actual offering over the list price so yeah. i tend to work with a lot of first-time buyers that is my bread and butter yeah. i love them i love the experience with them but if we're not setting them up for that most basic point right yeah. now yeah. we're missing the mark well, also what I love about that, and as a buyer's agent, it gives me an idea. You know, if I'm looking at, you know, I'm in Detroit, right? So I'm just going to pick a community in Detroit, Livonia. Uh, if I'm looking at Livonia and I'm showing homes in the $250,000 price point, you know, it kind of gives me a little bit of ammo, just like I have ammo when I'm doing a CMA with a seller to show them where they should price their house. If I'm looking at list prices of around 250 comps in the last 90 days, list price 250 sold for 270, list price 250 sold for 265, list price 250 sold for 262. Well, then I can't recommend to my buyer paying five or 10,000 over asking is going to put them in a good position because I got three examples in the last 90 days where it took 12 to you know, 18 over asking. So that's super important, not just to share with your buyers, but when you're thinking about, I mean, listen, we're there. I'm, I just had an offer get rejected yesterday that I had to call the, the, the buyer and tell the bad news. When I can show actual amounts over asking price in the comps, then from there, I can give advice. Hey, I'm, you, know, you can see clearly five to seven over asking isn't cutting it, isn't getting it done. So that, that's, a, that's a great point. Yep. And when it comes down to, you know, this is something that we use in our reconsultations. So mm -hmm. just because of the lack of inventory right now, we're finding that it's taking buyers 30, 60, 90 days to get something under contract. Mm -hmm. Now I had this happen with a couple buyers last year. I even, I showed the data trying to get them, <clears throat> excuse me, up a little bit higher and they weren't that comfortable doing so. What ended up happening? They priced themselves out of being able to purchase. So, because they only want to buy in the area they want to be in, there's no need to take a step back and live somewhere that they don't want to live. So mm -hmm. the more upfront we are about this from the beginning, yeah. the quicker we're going to be able to get something moving through. You so, just used the term there, Jolene, reconsultation. Yep. Uh, real quickly, can you explain what that is? 
So after we've gone and had a few offers submitted, after it's been 30 plus days of searching, totally dependent about your, or excuse me, dependent upon your specific situation with your client, sometimes we have to sit back down and we have to yeah. sit back down because now when we're seeing homes closing 30,000 above that list price, now maybe we need to calibrate what our goals are because of our actual ability to purchase. Yeah. So, I was looking for, I was looking for, I'm bouncing around cause I was looking for a, a marker. Cause you know what I want to do right here. I want to draw the basic L right with the line up here declining. All right. And showing that over time, the buyer's confidence in us diminishes every time we write an offer that gets, that gets declined, their confidence in us goes down. Even if it's not our fault, even if they're not taking our advice. Right. So you have to have that reconsult to bring their confidence from going like this to back up. And so, you know, we show that every time when we have that conversation, it's important. Absolutely. So we'll get off this soapbox and on to our next. So next appraisal guarantee, obviously, you know, we know that most people are doing this right now. So this can be capped. This can be non-capped. It's totally dependent on how much money your clients are willing to put ahead of that actual appraised value. Next up, free occupancy post-closing. So typically, you know, 30 days. Of course, I think most people are doing this right now. Our out-of-the-box ideas are really, you know, free occupancy for 90 days. Why is that out of the box? Because we don't want to keep our clients out of their home for that long. But when we start running out of money to throw at these sellers, we have to come up with some other fun ways to make our offers more attractive. So free occupancy, huge. You've got to decide with your clients based on their motivation and timeline, what can they actually offer to these sellers? Next up, large earnest money deposit. So people seem to think that this really isn't a big, big deal. Um, but an earnest money deposit actually shows, number one, how serious you are. But number two, that there's a lot of cash to play with and cash mm -hmm. that we're already collecting. Yeah. So say we do have a $40,000 difference within our appraisal. If they're putting down a $50,000 earnest money deposit, guess what? Seller knows that that's not going to be a deal killer. Yep. So the larger that that is, the more serious your buyers really do look in the purchase yeah. process. Especially when the seller is a baby boomer or older, right? Uh, that they, they, you know, they, they love the term, oh, the good faith deposit, right? Like that, they're so set on that because they're used to that from, from back in the day, right? So um, it, as simple as it sounds, cause got, you know, obviously, you know, if it's contingent on inspection or financing, which we're gonna talk about that in a second, cause there's, you know, obviously some deals that we can't do that in order to get their offer accepted. But that, if you're used to writing like, well, we normally write one to 2%, knock that out of your language. All right. Go to, if they're putting 10% down on their loan, do a 5% down earnest money deposit. If they're putting 20% down on their loan, do an eight or 10% EMD. It makes a big difference to the seller. And it's not really any difference to the buyer because it's going to go towards their down payment or their costs anyways. Yep. And that is the conversation that has to happen during the buyer consult because they become concerned, okay? They're like, well, wait, what happens? Do I, do I lose this money? And this is where we explain to them that you know, you've got your three outs, well, hopefully dependent on yeah. what you've waived you know, with the offer. So as long as they know that that money is credited back to them at the closing table, use real life numbers. You give me 50,000, you owe 100 at closing, you're only bringing 50 now. Mm -hmm. Then they can rest a little easier that that money is actually going towards what they're hoping it's gonna be going towards. Yes. <laughs> so next up, shorten timelines. So this is something that I love. Uh, this is something that I, it's been working very well for me um, because one of our out of the box ideas is waiving the inspection, which I hate doing, obviously, unless it's a newer build, something of that sort, it takes the protection you know, away from your client. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing that's been working incredibly well is a shortened inspection period of either three or four days that's dependent on me reaching out to my preferred inspector and asking what timelines do you have available on these days for an inspection? Yep. And then we tentatively schedule one. Mm -hmm. So the offer is going over to the listing agent with an inspection already scheduled, already on the books. So you know mm. what, if that's three days, they know that they only have three days until they know that we're moving forward or not. So 
we want to shorten these timelines and same with even um, appraisal if we're obviously if we're doing one and closing. So another strategy that we love to use is a fully underwritten approval from our lender. Yeah. Hey, hold on, Jolene. Can I, can I just add one thing to the inspection conversation? Um, not just telling them that the inspection, Hey, don't worry. We got it all set up for this, this Friday at 3 PM, assuming our offer gets accepted, actually show them the confirmation, yep. right. Or the email from the home inspector that says, yep, I'm good for Friday at three. Let your buyer know I can be there. Right. Because now what happens is the, the listing agent, not all of them, but some of them are going to say, look, they've already got their inspection you know, or the seller sees that document. Wow. They're already ahead of the game. They already got their inspection set up. That's awesome. Number yeah. one, number two, and forgive me if I'm stealing your thunder and, and you're taking this from, if I'm taking this from somewhere else in the checklist, but also some of the home inspections that we've been able, or some of the deals that we've been able to get done based on removing the home inspection is not just completely removing the home inspection contingency, but putting in there that the inspection is just for informational purposes only. In other words, we're not going to use the home inspection as a negotiation tool. Now, it's still contingent on inspection. Your buyer can still back out, but what it's doing is it's giving the seller peace of mind that they're not going to come back and nitpick and, you know, the doorbell's not working right or the screen door won't close properly or you got some broken window seals. We're only doing the inspection for informational purposes only. We do we will not be asking you for any concessions. Putting that in the in in the writing up front is going to help you get more offers accepted, especially if you leave the inspection contingency in there, which as you heard Jolyn just say, we do recommend we, you never want to recommend to buyers, yeah, just go ahead and waive your inspection. That'll increase the chances. It will increase the chances, but you're taking on a lot of liability by making that recommendation. Yes. So that is something that we had moved over to kind of the out of the box ideas um, is the for informational purposes only. And this is something that has worked for me every time. I haven't had a client wave an inspection. Other people have. We are still getting our offer accepted. The call that I typically get from the listing agent is, you know, you had the best terms all around the best terms. So what I'm another real out of the box fun one um, my better half he is in construction he you know builds things every day so what i've been having him do with some of my clients is come to the showings with us so we can in essence do a type of pre-inspection walkthrough knowing that we're not going to be asking for anything out of the inspection itself and then we can waive it with a little more peace of mind if we have to gotcha now Something to be noted about the for informational purposes only, how I present this to a listing agent is it is a pass or fail structure. The goal is to go in and verify that there are no major, major, major concerns that would end up being incredibly costly. Yep. Now, here's a little strategy. We have gone in and found some things that have had a little bit of, you know, a, a, a almost major concern, but definitely more than a minor concern. And what I'll do, because I always give ourselves one day, so we'll have a three-day or four-day inspection period with a one-day turnaround time, because that's typically how long it takes for the report to even come in. Yep. At that point, I reach out to the listing agent and say, hey, just wanted to let you know that we, we've wrapped up our inspection. We're heading home. You can tell your sellers that we're good. Um, and we found something that that is a bit of concern. So my buyers really want to sleep on this tonight just to make sure they're willing to take that on. What does that do? The listing agent then goes, well, what, what's the problem, right? And then we tell them with the explanation of, hey, you know, this is probably going to be something that every buyer is gonna have issue with because this could be a very expensive fix. So they really just wanna sleep on it to make sure that they can take that on. So talk to the agent about it. Then what happens the next morning? They come back and say, you know what, I spoke with my sellers last night and they, they know that this is probably going to be a hot button issue for anybody. So they, they don't want this to be the deal breaker. If that's the only concern, we'll get it taken care of and let's move through that. Sellers want to make deals work. They don't necessarily want to reopen their door for 500 more showings or, you know, collecting mm -hmm. all these off, going through the process again. So yep. if we're strategic in the way that we, we're packaging it and we're handling it then we can usually find a little more success than we have been, okay? With still allowing protection for our buyers, which is most important. So next up, obviously we know this, the conventional loan versus FHA. 
this is on here because we have some buyers that are FHA that are so close to potentially being conventional. So if we give them this sheet ahead of time, they may make the decision that they don't have the best buying power right now. And they're going to run home and they're going to work on checking off eight more boxes that's on this list. So remember, guys, this is a tool, a tool to inform people that don't know, not, not to inform us. Yep. So if we can get them into conventional financing versus FHA, and maybe that yeah. takes a month or two, great. They're now in a better position to move forward. Yeah. And I just want to reiterate, uh, you can have all the ideas in the world. And I know that every market is different in terms of what works, what doesn't, what everyone's doing, what no one else is doing. What, what I want you to take away from this particular discussion is taking all of those things gathering them and putting them into one list and making sure your buyers truly understand their buying power. And there's a lot of, of, of value. And of course, having it in your head and, and being able to educate the buyers during the buyer consultation and, and during the offer consultation, but taking it from your head and putting it on paper and being able to hand it to them and being able to show them the more boxes you check, the greater chance we have of getting the offer accepted, being able to educate them on their buying power is going to create a higher level of loyalty to you, right? The more you, you, put it in writing and put it in front of them visually for them to see the greater chance they're going to buy in to what you're selling. And so it's super important, no matter what ideas are working for you or not working for you, that you put them all on paper and you present them to every single buyer. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, at JGA, we've got our lovely what happens next guide. And that is presented at our buying consultation, which is where we introduce the buying power checklist. So this is what it looks like, guys. It goes on, it's on this beautiful little page. It's got these check boxes. And let me tell you, I send my clients home with these clients that don't have the, the best buying power. And two, three months later, they're sending me a picture like, hey, we were able to check off three more boxes. We're almost there. So remember that this, this gets them excited too. This is legitimate information that's useful to them, even though it seems like it's elementary to us. So next up, larger down payment. So this kind of circles back to where we're at with the large earnest money deposit. If we are able to show that we're putting 20, 30, 40% down on this home, again, the listing agent and the sellers can rest easy knowing that if we run into any financial issues, there is plenty of liquid cash available in order to satisfy any of those concerns. Next up, take on any FHA and VA required repairs. Man, this is so tough right now. And as much as we love our veterans and we want to get them into homes, I find that a lot of listing agents just don't want to deal with a VA loan. We know that a lot of listing agents don't want to deal with FHA loans. Why is this? There is a cost to them nine times out of 10 to pursue this type of financing. So what do we do to strengthen? We remove that cost from them. Now, if they don't have to worry about it, we can escrow money, we can get temporary certificates of occupancy, whatever it may be, uh, excuse me, that's for our city inspections, but we can make sure that we are covering the repairs, we're taking that cost off of their back. If they have to make repairs, because I'm sure you guys are wondering, well, how do we do that when everything has to be done before the loan closes? They do the repairs, we escrow the funds, the buyers escrow the funds that get released or the agents, yes, are paying for those repairs. So we have a few different ways to work around that, which we can absolutely you know, dive a little deeper into at a later point in time, but take the responsibility off of the seller. La uh, next up, excuse me, fully underwritten approval from the lender. This, this helps us to shorten our timelines. This helps us to strengthen our actual offer that's walking in the door. And this helps for an entirely better situation all around, in my opinion, because then we remove all of the surprises. Nothing's popping up in the credit report a week later. There's no poor verification of assets that has occurred. This allows us really to take probably five days off of our process, right? So if we're trying to shorten our closing timeline, and instead of that first week of the lender trying to collect W-2s, pay stubs, bank statements, this and that, they've already got it. They've already run it through. We're already a quarter of the way basically into our process in order to get that sped up, looking better to our sellers as well. 
And if I can just add to that, Jolyn, I yep. know that every market has uh, a lender or maybe a couple lenders that maybe that don't have the best reputation in town, but your buyer is insistent on using them. All right. You know, we just had one recently uh, that was an employee of this particular lender who is based in Detroit. Um, um, you can probably figure out who that is. And it hurts us in getting our offers accepted when a buyer shows the pre-approval from this particular company. And so when your buyer is adamant about working with their lender, which I know Jolyn's going to talk about in a little bit, uh, always make sure you get a backup pre-approval or an even, you know, full, as, as she mentioned, the underwritten approval from another lender that's known in your community, from another lender that has a good reputation in your community. So essentially, if they say, yeah, I don't care, I still want to go with this company, you're at least showing, all right, we know that this pre-approval might not carry a lot of weight. So we actually had our buyer use our in-house lender. We actually had our buyer use this lender. So you can see that everything has been verified and we do trust this pre-approval letter. And let's just knock that out of the park right now and talk about it because that's one of my most favorite topics uh, because I've got my right hand guy. I've got my lender that I've been working with for 10 plus years and I'm basically always able to sell my clients on getting a second unbiased opinion from somebody else if they've been approved before. And how we do this is by explaining that, hey, I just want to verify that the best rate and terms and product for you is what you're finding right now, mm -hmm. because they don't even think buyers don't know that uh, certain lenders can offer certain products. They think they're going to get either an FHA loan, a conventional loan, a VA loan, an RD loan. You know, they, they think that just that is it. So if we're able to explain to them that house lender number one has other products that they very well may not find elsewhere that piques their interest number two by being able to say you know i know you've been calling your lender to get me a copy of that pre-approval letter and we haven't had the best time getting a hold of them here's a great opportunity guys if that's really what's happening you know i'd love for you to talk with my in-house lender who's actually in the office right now because you're having this conversation during your buyer consultation mm -hmm. so you can go pull your lender from the end of the hallway that they're yeah. sitting in their office mm -hmm. and then you can explain guess what it's that easy every day for me to get an answer on what's going on with your loan yeah there is and no it, and if not in person you can do it via zoom also right absolutely absolutely but make sure that you're explaining that value to them as the lender is based with you they yeah. are with you majority of the time so you are able to get to them before your client would even be able to get to them via a phone yeah. call Oh, that adds a ton of value. It does. I hate to say it. It's kind of a secret weapon to some degree because, you know, if the listing agent is not familiar with who the lender is, I'm sorry, it's, it's a knock against your offer. And it is one thing. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, we have a fiduciary to our seller and to present all offers and to follow the rules and to follow the code of ethics. But, you know, agents are inserting their opinion. Listing agents are inserting their opinion when they are presenting offers to their sellers. And so if, the listing agent just had a bad deal with ABC mortgage company. And don't get me wrong. Agents can have bad deals with all mortgage companies. I'm not saying that, that there, there is one that, that is above all, but when you know that there's one that's very well known in your community, uh, may be a good idea to get in relationship with them and make sure you have an easy way to get pre-approvals because everyone knows this lender or everyone knows this bank. It's going to help you get more offers accepted. And when, you know, so when I'm sending my offers over to these listing agents, I put right in my offer email, you know, I've copied our lender directly on this email for easy communication. So you're aware he and I've been working together for the past 10 years, and we have worked incredibly hard to be able to ensure a smooth and efficient process yep. for you and your sellers. Yep. So if you can really build that relationship and you can convey that, and when you start showing up with that same pre-approval letter from that same lender for all of your clients, yes. and these agents have had a good experience, that's what they want to do. Yep. So that helps you building your value proposition as an agent. That helps you to strengthen the offer ability and opportunity for your client, which is what this is all about. 
So we're going to finish up. Okay. So city inspections, we can assume those. Um, this is something I know some places don't have these. We unfortunately are kind of littered with them in certain areas where the cities make it difficult to uh, convey a transfer of sale. But if the buyer is able to, that's something that we can talk about a little bit later at a different point in time. Um, letters. So letters to sellers. Um, this is super controversial. And this is something that I will still encourage um, my clients to do as long as the listing agent hasn't put it in in the real cop that no no love letters. Mm -hmm. um, but and check story, check with your broker disclaimer. <laughs> yes, yes, and and what has to happen in these letters for them to be okay is your client talking about what they love about the home, nothing more, nothing mm -hmm. about them, nothing about their kids, nothing about what they do for work, nothing about anything other than this home was perfect. I love the updating you did. This has room, you know, for my family to grow. Yep. This, that, as simple and basic as that can be. Yep. That's a controversial one. So, yeah. you know, that, yes, check with everyone before you do that, but it can still be a great tool dependent on how emotional the sellers are about selling their home. Mm -hmm. And last but not least on our basic list, and this is one that I really do not like, but if you use it pro properly, it can be, okay, the escalation clause. So my kind of stance, my personal stance on that is, hey, just put your best foot forward the first time because all of these other buyers have done that. Yep. But, you know, it's it's the escalation clauses that come in saying, I'm going to pay $500 over. No, if you're coming in saying, I'm going to pay 10,000 over, okay, great. But that's really not what we're seeing in our market. So, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of listing agents that have told me like, don't even submit an escalation clause because- yep throw it in the garbage. So it's going to be dependent. Check with the listing agent before you do that. Yes, it can be a great tool. Yes, it can work against you. Check in with who yeah. you are working with. Okay. There's really two, there's really two questions we should be asking every listing agent. And I know what you're going to say, but it's hard to get them on the phone. It's hard to get them to respond. Just like a lead, text them, call them, email them. Uh, I, I can tell you on my listings, I love the persistence, you know, our, our staff between Christine and Taylor, our transaction manager, uh, they love when agents follow up with us because then we know they're bulldogs and getting these deals to the closing table, but watch this. They better be asking me two questions. Ready? Question number one, write these down besides price. What is the number one most important thing that your seller is looking for in an offer from our buyer besides price? A lot of times the, the listing agent is going to just give you their opinion. They're not even going to check with their seller. They're just going to tell you what they like to see, right? They might say, well, again, we, we want to see money over appraisal, period. All right. That's the number one thing I got to go back to my buyer on fo or focus on and focus on. Or they might say, Jolyn, well, our buyer, our sellers are actually building a house and it's not going to be ready until July. So if there's any way we can time this, uh, the closing and the move date. So they don't have to move twice. They would love that. And you guys know sellers will accept an offer. That's less money that gives them more convenience, right? So aside from price, what's the number one thing your seller is interested in seeing in an offer? All right. Number one, number two, to Jolyn's point right there, how do you feel about escalation clauses? How do you feel about escalation clauses? You're asking the listing agent this because the listing agent might say, Oh my gosh, I love them. I use them all the time. All right, we got to we got to consider doing an escalation clause. I got to go back to my buyer, or you might have a I hate can't stand by the right not um, you know, and and that's it. So it's best to find that out that's before you write the offer. And when these agents aren't picking up the phone because five hundred other agents come, put that in a text. Hey, I know you're crazy business. And I'm sure you've got a million people inquiring about this. Yeah. I just have a really quick question for you. Yeah. What's going to be most important to your seller? Yeah. I mean, as simple as that. And then also, you know, shoot them an email if need be. Don't feel like you have to connect over the phone because, you know, we know that that can be difficult. And the person that understands, you know, the listing agent that sees you kind of take a seat back and use different mediums of communication may think, oh, this is going to be an easier transaction to get through working with this person. They're not calling me nonstop off the hook, this, that. So you can make an impression in multiple different yeah. ways on the listing yeah. agent. Okay? And on that note, uh, Jolyn, and again, forgive me if I'm stealing some of your thunder here. Um, 
we have to educate our buyers when it comes to setting expectations that they're not going to be able to get all their questions answered. Yep. Right. And this goes back to kind of the buyer consultation. Uh, you know, well, I want to find out about, I want to know what their average heating bill is in the winter months. I want to know what their AC bill is in the summer months. You know, we have to make sure during the buyer consultation, we're letting our buyers know that we have an opportunity to get answer to those que- to those questions during the, the inspection period, which really we refer to as the due diligence phase. Yep. That's when we can get answers to those questions. If they're hearing that from you at the time that you're writing the offer and not at the time of the buyer consultation, they're going to lose a little bit of trust in you. Yep. Oh, what? I have to write an offer on a house before I can even figure out whether I can afford the utilities? Fortunately, yeah. How do you think you're going to feel when they're hearing that for the first time after already seeing the home and after you're telling them uh, deadlines at 4 p.m., we got to go. You cover that during the buyer consultation and they'll understand that they can get answers to all of those questions after their offers have been accepted. Absolutely. Okay. Let's hop into some of our out of the box ideas real quick because I know we're running out of time. No, let's do it. We already talked about my first one, which I love, which is actually scheduling your inspection prior to offer acceptance. I mean, it shows, hey, we're ready to roll and we're going to get this process going as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next up, this is something that I did last summer that worked for me really well with an FHA offer that we were in multiple offer situation, all of these things. And we were contingent. This is crazy. But this was the deciding factor, guys. The seller had already bought his new house. He was already moving and he didn't want to have to take care of two, two acre lots. So what did we do? I said, we're going to call the lawn company. We're going to hire them because these were people that they were going to hire anyways when they moved in. And he goes, oh, well, if I don't have to pay for it and I don't have to come over and take care of this, great. No one else has offered to do that for me. Mm -hmm. So think about the things, the practical steps that your buyers are going to have to take moving into the home anyways, and see if you can implement some of them ahead of time. So if we, next up, if we have uh, offered the seller's occupancy and they're staying there for free and we're really running out of ideas, let's offer to pay their utilities. So at closing, we can put $300 into an escrow account that title holds. They can provide their consumers or DTE bill, whatever, at the end of their occupancy period. And we can pay that $160 for them and get the rest of that cash back. So you're not taking on liability. You're not putting anything in your name. You're not doing that, but you're offering them yet another little cash buffer in order to make their transition that much smoother. Next up, and this just happened to a client of mine that we closed last week, allowing the sellers to leave what they don't want to move. So this is risky, guys. This is super risky. And obviously, you're not going to do this in a hoarder's house, right? You're probably going to do this in a home where it's been well-maintained. The sellers obviously you know, care about their home, what they're living in, the furniture they have, this or that. So if there are things that they really don't want to move, there's a couch in the basement. Who cares? Take it. Move on. If that's the deciding factor between your offer getting accepted or not, take the couch. Sell it on Craigslist. Someone will come and get it. Mm -hmm. Next up. So as we talked about our appraisal guarantees, you know, we're also doing just, you know, capped appraisal gaps. So something that within my mastermind with my buyer mastery class that we came up with was the appraisal gap up to a certain number, but allowing the seller to keep the excess. So say we put a $25,000 limit on the appraisal and then it comes in, you know, at only 15. Now they're getting an extra 10 grand. Love that one. This is fantastic. Yep. So this is still a way to protect your buyers because they say, I only want to do, you know, I'm only comfortable. I only have 25,000 to spend. But if we only need 15 of that, now the sellers are getting that extra 10. Wonderful. Everybody's happy. This is another fun one that came out of uh, our buyer mastery group tapping into investments to become a cash buyer. So with our 401ks, with everything going on right now with COVID, they have actually lessened to remove the penalties if it, if it deals with purchasing a home. So you could cash out that, in essence, that entire account, become a full cash buyer, and then do a cash out refi after you've gotten it and replenish that fund. So we've got different ways to work around that without actually taking a monetary hit on it. Yeah. Because a lot of investment companies, as people are desperate for money during COVID, have removed that penalty. So this is going to be something completely situational. 
this is going to be one of those where your buyer's like, wait, what? But in some markets where cash is really the only thing that is prevailing, we've got to be thinking outside of the box. Yeah. So next up, um, paying all seller closing costs. So this has been a fun one that we've implemented. And now this typically comes with a cap. Okay. So we will pay all of the seller's closing costs up to $8,000, up to $10,000. So this can include literally everything that's on their side of that settlement statement. That can include paying the buy side commission. That can include paying their transfer taxes. Anything that shows up there, you know, their title policy, whatever it may be, we can actually put that together and, and cap it so that this is something, yet again, we're going way above and beyond, but this is where we're kind of being forced. That's a corner we're being forced into. Yep. So if we have to, we can offer to do that for them as well. I've got, let's see, I've got one more left for you guys because we already went over the wave inspection, which we don't like. Last but not least, a per diem penalty for not hitting a closing date. So if we're saying, hey, we're going to close on this day. And if we are late whatsoever, you're going to get $100 a day, $200 a day, whatever that may be. And guess what, agents? Put that under. If they're telling you that they can close it by this day and time, then have them pony up if they can't. Yep. So this is something that will give the sellers that peace of mind that, hey, we're going to close on time because why? Probably because they have to purchase another home. So they may already have something wrapped up. They may already have something under contract. This actually may give them the peace of mind to hurry up and go get searching for that next home because they know that they're going to take a monetary gain if we don't hit those that closing date. So all kinds of fun different uh, fun different things that we can do to for our poor buyers. But hey, the goal is that they need a home. Yeah. So we're trying to give you all the tools so that you can get there. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah, our, our job, of course, is to be the fiduciary, make sure they understand uh, when, when they are overpaying for a house, make sure they understand that they're overpaying for a house. And at the same time, it's my job to secure you a home. So our fiduciary went from getting them the best deal on a home to making sure they get a house, right? And it's important that whenever they're doing anything outside of the box, paying over appraised value, you know, paying, you know, seller's costs, make sure you understand that, that, or make sure you explain to them that this isn't typical of normal times, but these are the times right now. And of course we could go on with, well, how do you create urgency with buyers that say they want to wait? And that's a whole nother webinar. You know, we'll be talking about that at a later date, but Jolyn, a lot of people have been asking the question I've noticed during the session of, you know, how do we get our hands on some of this stuff? And the reality is, you know, our job, when we do these webinars, when we share, we're always going to bring 45, 50, 55 minutes in this case, uh, 57 minutes of real relevant information. But we always have a solution to what we're dealing with right now. And one of the one of the opportunities that all of our attendees have is an opportunity to work with you uh, in a small group setting once a week for 45 minutes through our buyer mastery program. And so for those of you that are asking, you know, how do I get my hands on this stuff? You know, the, the, the home buying timeline or the what happens next and the buying power checklist. Well, number one, I would encourage you to just create your own. You don't need us for that. Uh, but if you want to make your life a little bit easier and you want to take advantage of, of a group coaching program, which a lot of people pay thousands of dollars for coaching, uh, our program is just what, Joel, in four months for $3.99 a month? I mean, it's like, what, $1,600? So for those that are wondering, all right, how can I get to the point to where I'm selling 40, 50 buyer sales a year and only working 35, 40 hours a week? Now, keep in mind, Jolyn, we have a lot of people on that are agents with buyer's agents. We have a lot of buyer's agents on and we have a lot of solo agents on or just in general agents working with a lot of buyers. So this program that's starting in April is really for anyone. I mean, I, I can tell you for myself, if, if it wasn't our program, I would be going and looking for a program like this to put all of our buyer's agents through because I want them to learn from you. You are the, you are the queen of buyer sales. So can you tell us a little bit about what's coming up in April? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, today, what we've given you today, uh, it, it, honestly, it means nothing without the foundation that's been built. So if you just go out with this list of tools today and we haven't set the proper expectations, we haven't sat down for the buyer consultation, we haven't done 
all of the everything, they're not going to be successful for you. And I want to be clear about that. We have specific strategies when it comes to presenting this, when it comes to walking them through this. We have rewritten all of our scripts so that they're relevant with right now, because as we know, what we used to say back in the day doesn't really work. Right. I've had to update my buyer consult script to talk more about how we used to be able to negotiate with sellers and now we're negotiating with the market. So it's a completely different strategy and we've had to really retune everything to get our agents to the point of understanding how to be successful in this current market. So yeah, we dissect every single one of the scripts. We start with the buyer consultation. We head into the offer consultation and the proper way to do that. We yeah. talk about offer submission and building the rapport and the relationship with the listing agent. Sure. We talk about how we get through the inspections and the appraisals and all of our common hurdles. Yeah. And really my favorite part of this, because customer service has always been my focus, is uh, Kate and I and Jeff, we've written this program with a very high level of customer service already built into it. Yeah. So instead of having to worry about, okay, now how do I provide that five-star customer experience? You're already doing it by taking all of these steps. You are making these buyers love you, trust you, want to be around you. And I'm literal living proof of that. I mean, that is what I have built my career on. Um, I've made friends that were Zillow leads that came in the door. I've been to their weddings. I've, I mean, when you handle them properly from the start and you learn how to actually close that transaction and keep adding value to them after the fact, mm -hmm. that is when you've won. And that is really what we build from start to finish within the buyer ministry program. Yeah. So if we could have the details thrown up on the screen, I know it's getting close to lunchtime for some of you. So we'll just be real quick with this. If you want information on this program, you text just very simple, just like you texted the word scripts, you text the word buyer to 55444. That's buyer to 55444. But these are eight, these are 16 Zoom sessions, Jolyn. Uh, and it's very kind of tight knit because you all have an, a mastermind in addition to these sessions. So I, I'm in that mastermind and I see the, co the conversations around how can we how can we better convert Zillow leads? How can we do a better job of getting our buyer offers accepted? So it's not just a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, 45 minute webinar and I'm off. I mean, this is this is a group of agents that are role playing together, that are getting together and increasing their conversion skills, uh, practicing their buyer consultation. So sorry, continue. No, that that was actually, thank you for bringing that up, because that was, I think, the best piece of feedback that we got from virtually everyone that took the Buyer Mastery program this last time around, was not only did we love the content, but we love that you set aside 10 minutes at the end of every single class to say, okay, what problems are you facing this week? What mm -hmm. obstacles, what objections, what are we hearing? Or also, you know, what, what were your success stories? So mm -hmm. I actually like to start every single class with, I need three wins from last week. I need everybody, you know, that wants to share, give me a win. And that's something that the next person might hear that they need yeah. in order, you know, to have their own win. Mm -hmm. So it's been a wonderful, you know, way to get everyone together and really masterminding in every yeah. class. But that's another reason that it's got to stay small, you yeah. know, we can't yeah. have too many people with us or it doesn't, it's not yeah. a talking format like this. Well, and we're obviously I know that, you know, you wrote the program based on what you've learned over your last 10 years of working here and obviously what Kate Simon has learned as well. And what's really cool is we have all of our agents at JGA, even though they're in this every single day, they've been around JoLynn every single day, they've been around me every single day, we have them going through the program right now. And so, you know, it's, it's amazing how a lot of agents say, well, yeah, I have a buyer consultation, I know how to do a buyer consultation. Well, all right, well, then tell me the seven steps of a successful buyer consultation. Well, yeah. what do you mean? I sit down, I educate them, I set them up on a search. Well, no, what do you do first? What do you do second? What do you do third? It was really cool. Just last week's session with JGA, how you actually covered in detail, step one, step two, step three. So for those of you that are like, I have a pretty good buyer consultation. What do you mean? Well, no, this is, this is nothing compared to that. They don't teach this in real estate school no matter what company you're with, they don't usually teach this at the franchises or at the independents. I mean, quite frankly, if they did, we wouldn't exist today. Uh, right. But but I love that it's not just, you know, uh, how to get buyer's offers accepted, like we talked about today. It is, you know, how to generate, and, and you, you actually break down what's super cool is the difference between converting a Zillow lead and a Facebook lead. Yeah. The difference between converting a, a realtor.com lead and, and a homes.com lead, right? You cover all the sources and the difference 
the different techniques to convert those. So it's a lot more than just a, you know, 45 minute educational webinar. And, and I do think the mastermind is a big part of it. Huge. It's a huge part. Yeah. And then when we're looking at different conversion strategies, I mean, just sitting down with a, a proper buyer consultation should put you in like a 70 to 80 percent success yeah. rate of converting these buyers. Yeah. So well, even what you talked about, the reconsultation, you cover that too. I mean, uh, if I'm hearing reconsultation for the first time, what's that? You know, that that's that's a big part of this process of why these buyers not only continue to to use you, but to buy homes from you, but to refer you to write great reviews on you. And you're you're sharing all with everybody. So um, it starts when, Jolyn? Starts in April? April 26th. Yeah. We're April 26th. All right. And it's for four months and wow. there's, there's zoom sessions, 45 minute zoom sessions with Q and a and mastermind and all that. And it's what three ninety nine a month. It is. It yep. is really a month. It was actually written as a 15 week program, Yep. Um, but I talk a lot. So we found that this last time around it ran for 16 weeks, <laughs> but I'd yeah. rather converse and talk with everybody. I want to hear what you're doing because what yeah. you're giving me in these conversations is going into that program to better the next people that are coming through it. So sure. you guys are just as valuable to us as we are to you. Yeah, that's right. So if you want more information, text the word buyer to 55444. That's buyer to 55444. And then Jolyn, do you have anything else to share that I might've forgot before I share just a couple last things before we go to lunch for some of us? I mean, I could share a million other things about this, but I gotta, I gotta stop talking. So all right. Nope. You're good. Thank you all for being here today. It was awesome to see how you're facing. I hope you got some good info out of this. Awesome. Thank you, Jolyn. All right. A couple of quick things. Our next session will be this same time, 11 a.m. Eastern Wednesday. We're talking about creating your own unreal experience and finding talent to match it with the Taylor Cornfield. This is the person that runs all of the operations for JGA, a team selling between 900 and 1,000 transactions a year. So if you didn't think that customer service was a lead generation tool, like I thought, I didn't realize that you can actually generate leads with customer service, then you need to be here because next Wednesday at 11, we're talking about creating your own unreal customer experience and finding talent, whether you're on a team or, or aspiring to, to, to have a team or whatever, you're going to need talent to fit your unreal customer experience at some point. We're covering that next Wednesday at 11 a.m. You go to use the same uh, uh, website, gloveru.com forward slash webinar to sign up for that. It's free. It's next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Last call on those resources. Again, if you want more information on JoLynn's program, buyer to 55444. You want all of our all of our scripts, including buyer and seller, you text the word scripts to 55444 as well. Hopefully you've done that. If you're not in the Glover U inner circle, you should be. We share a ton of information, video, content, role play partners, accountability partners. That's all in there. You can sign up for our quarterly publication when you join the Glover U inner circle. That's the Glover Gazette. And last but not least, if you're looking to get to an in-person event, the Live Unreal Retreat is in July. It's in Traverse City, Michigan liveunrealretreat.com. All right, let's go get some buyer offers accepted. Let's have an awesome finish to the month, a great April, and we will see you guys next week, same place, same time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.